Saturday, June 16th. We're in the permaculture orchard. It's a plum tree, garlic mustard, two cabbages, dianthus, chives. Oh, look at these gooseberries. Mm, they're fat. I don't even know these are ripe yet, but these are ripe. There's a ton of them. Gooseberry. Mmm, it's almost as good as a schnozberry. Mmm, they're everywhere. Gooseberry much? We have like four or five varieties. Garlics. That looks like cabbage, maybe. Brussels sprout, shard, bleeding heart, amaranth, locust tree, some asparagus, second year. This is a fruit cocktail apple. It's four varieties of apples. And one of them is flowering right now. <laughs> I mean, they flower over a period of about eight weeks. It's a crazy tree. It's a new bush. Uh, there's choke cherries that are natural. This is a choke berry. I got a rhubarb coming up. Onions. Nice spinach bed. Um, giant mustard. Sugar snaps. Two new raised beds with eight varieties of uh, heirloom, exotic greens, and carrots. This is a dwarf. Scarlet Sentinel. Let's see how this does. There's a volunteer mustard. Still getting the well in, and now I'm backfilling all the irrigation. There used to be piles everywhere, but now we have hundreds of feet of irrigation and frost freeze everywhere. And it rained today. And it's gonna rain some more. Peruvian blue potato, mountain blue, looking excellent. That's an apricot country. We have some squashes coming up, and I have some uh, French climbing beans coming up there soon. Gremlin's having a blast with the snake. It's called the crinkle snake. It's basically a plush toy filled with trash. <laughs> Here we have fingerling potatoes and some wheat coming up. These are uh, mountain rose potato. Here's our Jerusalem artichoke square. These are uh, mixed blue potato which you can see are fantastic Colorado blue and three other varieties of potato in here these are ours to eat the rest are for sale I gotta get this petunia in <laughs> some new shrubbery I planted here's a small Nanking cherry that's uh, living a wild rose chive nice plum tree Amelanky or service berry, um, another honey locust. Here we have another currant. This is a prickly currant. It's a little different variety, and it has some smaller currants on it that turn yellow. I don't know if you can see those guys. Oh, there's a pink one. Let's eat this guy. The other plant didn't have spines. This one has prickles. Here's a red raspberry from one of our viewers. It's actually living. First one in three years in 10 different trials. <laughs> the lupin, the pear, catnip, and king cherry, another red raspberry I planted, another uh, gooseberry or currant, some peppergrass, scotch, pine. Okay, you wanna go to the greenhouse? Let's go to the final row. Oh, let's take a look at the pestamon. It's going to come out soon. It's amazing. Purple Mountain Spinach or Orac. We got some blueberry. 
honey locust, Nanking cherry, and a blueberry. And not even one that's close to blue. Some more asparagus, second year. We got some lettuce coming up in the permaculture orchard. Another raspberry, Nanking cherry. That's a Wenatchee apricot, Bing cherry. Some onions. Another uh, red raspberry I'm gonna plant. I think that's fall gold, actually. Another sweet cherry, some more potatoes. A little stand of purple orac. So we have a lot going on here. Trying to get all the irrigation in. There's Jim in the tent, reading a book on this lazy Saturday. To give you an idea, this is a 230 foot run to a frost free, buried to five feet deep. And it goes all the way to there to another frost free in this horse yard, and then all the way to the main one and a half inch line, which goes to the well, and then tees up the property. Glads are coming in and let's go in the greenhouse. Whew. Biodiversity is key. And we have had, we had an insect bloom, two different types of aphids, but it's controlling itself now <coughs> because of the amazing biodiversity we have here. A lot of things flowering to seed. I'm about to collect seed off of uh, this mustard. Some sunflower, mother of time. I got a pepper in there. A really interesting Saskatchewan tomato called Tom's Thumb. Where if we come over here, we might be able to find a ripe one. They're, they turn bright yellow down on the ground. They sprawl real low. It's a ground cover tomato. Some of this arugula looks amazing. We'll get to the peppers in a minute. We have a mosquito plant in here. Marigolds. It's about five or six varieties of things. Some peppers in here, and some strawberries, which haven't produced, and a tomato stuck on the corner there. I had some beans, this white kale, which is doing amazing, it needs to be harvested. And all these radishes are going to seed, and pak choy. So I'm about to harvest lots of seed to open up these carrots in here to get a little bit more right. Uh, light we're making a pizza and it's going to be a thai basil pizza so i'm going to be getting a lot of this basil for that pizza tonight the carrots some of them over here are doing much better than others uh, these are lunar white which is a white carrot and they're delicious they turned yellowish towards the end but i'll be eating that shortly here <laughs> Our beet harvest is amazing. There's probably 30, 40 pounds of beets in here. And this particular variety is about to come out. Some mambas, I pull it, but it's still plumping. Lots of nice uh, hatched chili peppers coming in. This bird's nest tomato provides four or five ripe tomatoes daily while I'm just for snacking. This is what happens mm. when you give them I'm not selling these. Even though they do command $5 a pound, you can't pay me to get rid of that. <laughs> Some nice lemony French sorrel. I'm about to make a salad. Nice giant mustard. We'll be steaming that. We have an eggplant in here and another one flowering. We'll be dropping eggplants shortly. Some tomatoes coming up. More Thai basil, some pepper varieties. I still have a slight aphid issue that I'm dealing with here. Almost controlled. I want to get you a good look at how many there are on there. But I just sprayed daily with the Dr. Bronner's really mild solution and slowly we're winning the battle. None of the rest of the peppers have aphids. There were on all the peppers. And now they're just on a few left, and we've got tons of production in the pepper area. And these peppers have only been in for two weeks. Nice radish. 
Georgia Southern. Look at the size of that Russian kale. It's two feet long. <laughs> and we have a beet harvest here that's going to get light as soon as I harvest this out for the market next week. Jerusalem artichokes on the wall that I'm going to be selling. Really interesting uh, aloe variety called tiger, tiger aloe that I'm proliferating in some stumps that we'll be selling. Looks kind of cool. There's some smaller ones down there. I got some more uh, containers planted with tomatoes, different heirloom, Mr. Stripey. And we've got some tomato action coming up in the back here, a big <laughs> sunflower. Some bee balms. More of those stumps. Some pink afghan. And that's a freak auto flower event right there. We'll take it. We've got these amazing shelves that hold tons of product. These are portulacas I'm going to be selling at the market. Five bucks of each. Some petunia. You know, other annuals people like. Crocusima. Look at these steps, man. Really came out nice. This is Leah's work down here. It looks amazing. Thank you, Leah. And then we got this. these two planted in soil. I got one, two, three, four, five, eight tomatoes in here. So we're going to be banging in tomatoes in about eight weeks. Really gorgeous Gerber daisy. Um, two pepper varieties, Mexi Bell. These are hot bell peppers and a yellow bell. Just amazing Thai basil going on in here and tomatoes. This bed is about 10 days old and or 12 days old. Some really high dill coming up. Parsley in the back. Really interested to see how these tomatoes do once they start popping. I think I'm going to have a lot. We've got this interesting endive variety. Super bitter.